So Boston Dynamics essentially finally taught their Atlas robot to think and act like a human. I'm talking about a robot that can listen to simple instructions and then figure out how to do incredibly complex jobs all by itself. So picture this. They've got this humanoid robot that most of you guys have probably heard of by now. It's called Atlas. And they actually taught this robot to take apart another robot called Spot. But here's the crazy part. It's not just mindlessly following the pre-programmed instructions. This thing is genuinely thinking about what it's doing. And the robot needs to be so good at many things, it's kind of ridiculous. It has to pick up different objects. Some are hard, some are soft, some are heavy, some are delicate, some are big and some are small. But that's not even the impressive part. While it's doing all this precise handwork, it has to coordinate its entire body to move around, avoid obstacles, and keep its balance when unexpected things happen. The researchers figured out that instead of programming robots to do that one specific task really well, they needed to create what they call robot brains that are really good at everything. Think of it like this. Would you rather hire someone who's amazing at one job or someone who's pretty good at a hundred different jobs? And that's the kind of approach they took here. So you're probably wondering, how the heck do you teach a robot to think? This is something that's pretty new. Well, they come up with this new four step process that I personally think is brilliant. So the first step that the robot does is it watches and it learns. First, they actually had humans control the robot using VR headsets, basically like playing the most advanced video game ever created. The human operators, which you can see on the screen now, could see the robot's eyes and control every movement. And then they recorded everything the robot did while the humans were controlling it, both with real robots and in computer simulations. Next, what they did was they took all of that robot recorded data and organized it really carefully. Think of it like editing a massive video. They had to sort through everything, label what was happening and make sure they only kept the good examples of the robot doing tasks correctly. Now, step three was that they had to train the robot brain. Here's where it gets really cool. They fed all this organized learning data into a computer brain with 450 million connections. That's like a simplified version of how our brains work. This robot brain learned to look at camera images, feel where its body parts are, and listen to spoken instructions. Then figure out what to do 30 times every second. Finally, they tested the robot with completely new tasks to see if it had learned or if it was just memorizing. And guys, the results were incredible. The whole process just kept repeating. And when they finally had something the robot can't do well, all they needed to do was to go back to step one and teach it more examples until it gets better. Now, there were three big ideas that made this work. Three principles that they followed to the core. Number one was teaching the robot everything, not just one thing. Most robot programming focuses on making a robot that's really good at one specific task. But these guys were like, you know what? Why don't we teach it to do everything? They built this insane VR control system that lets humans control every part of the robot, from tiny finger movements to full body walking and reaching. The human operator puts on a VR headset and literally becomes a robot. When they move their hand, the robot moves its hands. When they take a step, the robot takes a step. It's like having a human brain controlling the robot body. They also, for part two, did something really innovative. They made one brain for all tasks. So here's something that they, you know, figured out. Robot brains that learn lots of different tasks actually work better than robots that only know how to do one thing. It's kind of like how a person who has lots of different experiences is usually better at solving new problems than someone who's only ever done one job in their entire life. They trained their robot brain on multiple different robot bodies and thousands of different tasks. When I was taking a look at everything, I think there was one task that I found that was completely incredible. And this is what they call the spot workshop. And this basically involves the robot completely disassembling and organizing parts from their spot robot. Now, this isn't just picking up objects and putting them down. The robot is doing coordinated walking, precise stepping, setting wide stances. It's squatting down. It's picking parts with its fingers. It's regrasping objects when needed, articulating joints placing things carefully and sliding objects into position. And the task has three main parts. Taking apart legs, which is where the robot grabs spots robot legs from a cart. It folds them up properly and then places it on the shelf. Then the second part, which is where it grabs the faceplate from the cart. It pulls out a storage bin from the bottom shelf and puts the face plates inside. And then the third stage is the final cleanup. Once the cart is empty, it turns around to a blue bin behind it and clears out all the remaining spot parts carrying handfuls of them off to a blue cart. Now, 
This thing, I personally believe, was insane because they show a robot completely uncut doing this in the entire sequence and each part is just triggered by talking to the robot in plain English. You can literally tell it just what to do and it figures out how to do the rest. Now, how it gets even better is that you know how in real life things don't always go according to plan? Well, this robot has learned to deal with that too. If a part falls on the ground or if a bin lid accidentally closes, the robot doesn't just stop and give an error message like old robots would. It looks at the situation, figures out what went wrong, and then adapts its behavior to fix the problem. And the crazy part is that the first versions of their robot brain couldn't do this at all. But once they showed the robot examples of humans dealing with these kinds of problems and retrained the system, it suddenly could handle all sorts of unexpected situations without them having to change any of the underlying programming. This means that programming new robot behaviors doesn't require a PhD in robotics anymore. If you can show the robot how to do something, it can learn it. And think about what that means for the future. Now, the researchers, like I said already, they tested this system on dozens of different tasks. And the results are something out of science fiction. Using just one robot brain that listens to spoken instructions, Atlas can do everything from simple pick and place tasks to incredibly complex jobs like trying to rope, flipping over a bar stool, unrolling and spreading out a tablecloth, and manipulating a 22 pound tire. The rope, cloth and tire tasks are all perfect examples of things that would be nearly impossible with traditional robot programming because these objects are flexible and deformable. You can't really predict how they're going to behave. But with this new approach, teaching the robot is exactly the same whether it's stacking rigid blocks or folding a t-shirt. If you can demonstrate it, it means that the robot can learn it. Now, they can make the robot work faster after it's already learned. And this is another, you know, mind blowing feature. So they can speed up the robot's performance without having to retrain it. Since the robot brain predicts not just what actions to take, but also when to take them, they can actually adjust the timing to make everything happen faster. They show videos of the robot doing the same task at normal speed, which is the speed humans demonstrated it, and then at two times speed and even three times speed. They found they can generally speed up the robot by 1.5 to two times faster without significantly affecting how well it performs the task. And that means that in some cases, they can make robots work faster than the humans who originally taught them. So that's why I think this is absolutely insane because we're teaching these robots to do what we do, but even faster. And imagine how much better this is going to get in the next few years. Honestly, my brain can't handle it. Now, if you want to get into the technicals, I won't bore you guys with too much, but I will give you guys a small amount of details. But the robot brain itself is based on something called a diffusion transformer with 450 million parameters. So it processes camera images 30 times per second, along with the proprioceptive data, which is essentially just information about where all the robot's joints are and language instructions. So when the robot brain makes a decision, it doesn't just decide on the next single action, it plans out a whole sequence of 48 actions covering the next 1.6 seconds and typically executes 24 of those actions before running the decision process again. For the full Atlas robot, the brain controls the position of the hands, neck rotation, torso position, and both feet. And the upper body version is identical, except it doesn't have the torso and leg components. Now, computer simulations are what is driving this, and these make everything possible because these computer simulations let them test ideas quickly and repeatedly without risking damage to expensive robot hardware. The simulation is so accurate that they can use the same control software training code and even VR interfaces in both simulation and on the real robot. And they also use simulation data as training material alongside real robot data, which helps the robot brain learn from a much wider variety of experiences. Now, I can't stress how enough of a big deal this is. We just crossed the major threshold in robotics. For the first time, we literally have robots that can understand natural language instructions, combine complex locomotion with precise manipulation, adapt to unexpected situations in real time, learn new tasks just from human demonstration, and work faster than their human teachers. And the research blog, if you've read it, I've spent a lot of time reading it, 
And they were very clear that this is just the beginning. They're working on several next steps that are going to make this even more incredible. Better force control, imagine robots that can feel textures and adjust their grip accordingly, faster, more dynamic manipulation, learning from different types, using reinforcement learning to make the system even better, deploying more advanced vision language and complex reasoning. So. What we're looking here is nothing less than dawn of truly general purpose robots. These aren't factory robots that can only do one repetitive tasks, but this is a robot that can watch you do something once, understand what you want it to accomplish. And then when you describe it in plain English, figure out how to do it using its entire body. I mean, this is crazy. We have so many implications of the future. I'm not going to bore you with them all, but cracking the code on how to give humans human-like intelligence for physical tasks is absolutely insane.